Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the seventh episode of the Two Brits, One Yank podcast. As you can see here, we are joined by a special guest, an FA Cup hero, Sam Korn. And uh, I'm also joined here by my two fellow Brits. One of the resident Brits, Solwan Jal Smith. And the other Brit, Sam Bomb. I just, I just realized I called myself a fellow Brit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. The brother's nervous. Uh, we're going to be very nervous. nervous. He can do it one take like I did with Lucas. Yeah, All right, he had, two he takes. Messed up. <laughs> two takes. It's not that bad. Come on. Hey, and we said that we were going to get uh, some big heroes on the pod. Sam was the original person we were trying to get on, actually, but our schedule yeah. didn't align. But now it's half term. There's no coaching today. So we managed to sneak him off just for an hour. I managed to get for a couple of hours, yeah. Well, we're, hope, we're hoping it's going to be a couple of hours. We don't know how long this could take. But. Yeah. <laughs> might, uh, his agent might ring him 15 minutes in saying, <laughs> say, we've got somewhere to be. Well, that, that was the issue. That was the issue we had at the start is that, you know, Gaffer was always calling him, trying to get him to sign this new deal. But now his agent's going to be nice and quiet. Yeah. Gaffer's not going to be ringing his line. He's got, he's got his new deal sorted for next season. And uh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, there you go. I, I have to say, I'm so looking forward to this. We had a great one last week with Lucas, <laughs> another FA Cup hero. So the term FA Cup hero is it was good to have for our first two guests. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing more about your story. And again, I feel like we know it quite well, but it will be nice for all the viewers to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that's happened this week um, that we need to talk about? So you coming back? Yeah, actually, yeah. Last night, I made my <laughs> first appearance in nearly three months. Last night, it was cool. a bit of a weird one because. I turned up at, at Gloucester, even though we were playing uh, Taunton. Had to do loads of running before the game because I wasn't in the squad. I was absolutely knackered. And then I get a call, call over from Gaffer saying, Lamar has taken a bit of a knock. You're going to be in the squad. And to be honest, my head was all over the place. <laughs> I was absolutely fuming that I was involved. And then I was running. And then all of a sudden, I'm on the bench. And I managed to get on. So it was very nice. Very nice to be back involved. Such a weird game. There's only, I think, 126, <laughs> 126 yeah. six so fans. Low. It so was like COVID, to be honest. Though. Big three points. But big three points towards Puts us, our... what, joint third? Yeah. This comes out Sunday, though, doesn't it? So Yeah, it's a massive game at Farnborough on Saturday. Yeah, big, so big game. Hopefully. Yeah. I think, actually, if we win that, we're guaranteed playoffs. I, I did see that, yeah. So, uh, massive, that. massive game. Yeah, yeah good yeah. run for the boys as well. What, seven points from three games in, yeah. in six days? It's, I mean, I feel for you boys, your, your legs must be hanging off at tired. this point. Yeah, it's yeah. a tough 10 minutes, man. It's <laughs> yeah. very tired. They all can, man. Can. <laughs> yeah. uh, another thing is going to be said, um, my mum and Jeannie have said that I shouldn't wear shorts anymore. <laughs> they were riding up quite high. Uh, apologies or... You're welcome if you're. Uh, if Instead, you like he's that. coming in his match day trousers. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, do you know I actually borrowed Straight these? I borrowed night. these from Bodie's wardrobe. He has about 25 pairs of them. Yes. That's all he wears. Corny's gone for the gone for the shorts. Yeah, been brave. Boys yeah. looking drip towel. And I've got to say, Mum, I told Boney that if he's gonna wear socks and put his feet up on the pod, he has to wear some shoes to try and cover how dirty they are at the bottom. <laughs> Is so. that what you was trying to cover? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's not me. It's my mum. My mum is fuming. Mum is fuming. I said they do it on the pod. It's actually a birthday today, so yeah. happy, oh, birthday well, happy, birthday. happy birthday to Mum. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Oh no! Actually, this will come out on Sunday. So yeah, we saw it. We saw it. We last hope night. you have a. We hope you've had a nice birthday. Anyway, a bit of a later birthday. You've had a nice birthday. Is that everything? Everything. That takes yeah. Yeah. Takes Connor, what about you? How you're getting on with your recovery? Yeah, you know, making good progress. <gasps> no brace. No brace on today. So Told. yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm happy with how things are going. And yeah, you know, I don't think it'll be too too much longer. But yeah, you know, it's kind of just plugging away and, and taking it one <laughs> day at a time. So the first thing he said to me actually today was. He's walking around the house. Joe, and like, so, so, look how yeah, good. No, he we're going to walk, and I said, yeah, walk quicker and get that, and go and set it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, while I, I, while I, I held my own break, today. <laughs> I held my own today. While I was on no, break. No, you were right today. Yeah, yeah. Connor was very good today. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, it was oh. me. I went missing. Had a shower that took about 20 minutes, by the way. <laughs> Another thing, we've been absolutely panicking because I accidentally dropped my phone down the toilet at Eastbourne Away. Yeah. So my camera is absolutely battered. So we're actually using Corny's phone as the main camera. Part of the pod. Part, he, part of the pod. He's, mm -hmm. he's going to get another, a follow on the, the Instagram page. Ooh, which finally. Is, it was actually your, your idea originally before we even got guests on. So we have yeah. to, we have to honor that. Follow. The follow. Yeah. yeah, Lucas, we gave him the follow. Ben so. Topham's still uh, begging for the follow, but he didn't sort the phone out in time. So uh, it's your fault, Tops. Poor people, Tops, so. man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He does get he's just getting <laughs> slain by everyone. He's not even here. <laughs> he can't defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can't defend himself he's here anyway. That's so. true. Well, yeah, you can't. He doesn't have a microphone. You just hear someone in the back go like, what was that? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Ta I thought. Takes off his shoes and all gets comfortable. <laughs> oh, oh, he's stuff. He's sacked. We're sacking him, by the way. Um, uh, that's everything, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, so I guess... 
you know, we start each pod the same way. I mean, I love how I did the intro and I feel like I haven't spoken in ages. <laughs> it's just this brother again, <laughs> just take it over. But uh, yeah, we start each pod uh, asking our guests the same question. So the question is, what was your first footballing memory, Sam Corn? Um, do you know what? Obviously having a whole older brother, uh, just being dragged around watching him play football from an early age. And then that probably just made my love of the game so big. And then, yeah, from that, just playing with my mates in school and then ended up in the grassroots team together for a good period of time. Yeah, I feel like I, so I don't have, well, none of us have <laughs> older brothers, but I remember always growing up, I wanted an older brother so badly just to play football with. I used to play with my cousin all the time, but having someone on the same roof playing, that must have been unbelievable, huh? Yeah, there, there's a lot of fighting going on for sure. There's a, <laughs> but it builds resilience. Um, yeah, listen, he was always the man that, criticized me the most but he's always my biggest fan and that's from today he's still the same with me yeah, yeah. he still comes we, to games we also also yeah, yeah, yeah. and he has some abuse at me from the side yeah. Yeah. he has some harsh he's a very hard pick of all of us <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not just you yeah he wants he wants us to do well he wants me to do well and whatever team i'm in, involved with then uh yeah he ain't shy to give his opinion what yeah, was what, your what was your first club sambo uh rustlers I presume that's local to... Yeah, like Bexley Way. Bexley Way. Um, yeah, from the age of about five to about 13. Really? Playing yeah. with all my schoolmates. And then, um, yeah, come to a point where it was a good team, but we weren't we weren't like Kent Youth League, as they say, mm -hmm. or the top division. And my brother mm -hmm. kind of said to me, if you actually want to progress in football, you gotta like look to like move on and mm -hmm. kind of like leave your mates. Your mates will be your mates mm -hmm. regardless. And because that is the top. It's because me and you are from like the same. That is the top league in it, Kent League. That's where all the best players that aren't in academies for people that are watching that don't know. That is where all the best players play and go to. Yeah, um, uh, below the academy level. Yeah, where did you go after that? Uh, I went to Brighton and Ropes. Brighton and Ropes. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Brighton and Ropes, and yeah, oh. from under thirteens, I believe, to. Yeah, we was honestly we was the best team in South London. Effectively, won the Kent Youth League like three times on a trot. Club brother, that's what we do. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just it was just that was your every day. You train during the week, and on a Sunday you mm -hmm. play your your grassroots fixture. Mm -hmm. And then from that, I think um, when I was about fourteen, fifteen, um, I had interest from Fulham. Went to their development centre, um, and then. I got lucky enough to get a trial with them after a couple of weeks. And I spent probably 16 months with them at the time. Um, and it was at, at that period where people were after the scholarship program. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't unfortunate. I was unfortunate not to get a scholar. Um, went to various other clubs, Crawley, uh, Mirwall. And uh, funny enough, when I went to Mirwall, they uh, offered me saying, but it was for, they wanted the right back and, I'll, as you know, I'm a midfielder and we know when we get put in certain positions, we don't want to play there. Um, and I was like, it's probably not for me. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say it. Yeah. I like how when he said anything. midfielder, he pointed at it me. Was, like, yeah. it, was it was the first thought that came to, to my head. It was the first thought that came to my head. Yeah, and then uh, funny enough, the the the, um, the coach there, Larry uh, McAvoy, is still there now. He's done a brilliant job with the 18s. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're in. they beat Chelsea the other week in the FAU. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, really yeah. Wow. See the semis? Yeah, I believe so. I think it's tonight, maybe. Really? Um, so, yeah, from there, he um, he actually done a bit like a Maystone program where you get your education as well as your scholarship with um, a team near me. Um, it was under Cambridge. And uh, at the time, that was the best option. And I went there, done my done my education. Um, but funny enough, my coach there at the, uh, at the time was uh, Jamie Day, which was the Welling United first team manager. Oh, okay. Right. And... Um, yeah, it kind of stemmed from there, really. Had a good season there. And then in my first year of my scholarship, as they say, um, I'd done various training sessions. And then after my first year, uh, he was like, oh, I'll come in pre-season. Uh, that was, I think they they just got promoted from the Connie South, so the Conference South, gone mm -hmm. into the Conference Prem. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I got myself a deal with uh, Welling First Team, just in and around it, it was like a huge experience. Obviously, going from under 18s football yeah, yeah, of course. Um, to then find myself with Welling uh, was huge. And not that I played at all, uh, but I'd loan spells mm -hmm. with Scaffold's teams, mm -hmm. Ryman teams, and it kind of 
made me who I am today, really. No, but I think that's so important for young players to understand sometimes that even though you think you should be playing at this level at 18, 19, mm -hmm. sometimes just training with these sort of players and going on loan is even more important than playing at that level. I think kids nowadays are influenced by, like, especially with social media, you've got to play for an academy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the way forward, like, mm -hmm. academy, academy. But it's not, like, going to, like Sam said, there to National League and being in and around that environment with, like, experienced Huge. pros and all, you learn yeah. so much. And then actually getting some experience playing yeah. men's first-team football at a lower level. 100%. Then when you come back to then play the National League in a couple mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. you are so much more ready for it. Oh, for sure. You go, when you drop down a level, especially men's football, you just get beaten up. Like, yeah. You literally do. You play on bad services, um, but that's when you earn your trait, really. 100%. You learn how to do certain things a little bit better, a little bit, a little bit more physical win your first and second phases, mm. as they say. And hopefully when you come to that stage where you get that opportunity higher up, then you're kind of ready, you're prepared. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, I'd say that you're quite a tenacious player. And obviously you're not the biggest. Do you think that going into men's football so early has definitely helped that? Yeah. That's a good question, actually. Yeah, that's good Yeah, question. for sure. Massively. Like, too fair, from an early age, I think where I wasn't, I didn't have the biggest of profiles, um, I was uh, always had to use my body more than... <laughs> The bigger boys, so um, I always loved the tackle. My brother always instilled that into me, the the old saying of uh, the first five minutes, let them know uh, sort of thing. And yeah, that's kind of maybe put a footprint into what I do today. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, yeah, any Macy United fan or who's seen this season or even the previous season, like you're always just putting your body on the line. I think even against, uh, who do you play on the week? Um, Monday, we played Welling. I think you made like three massive blocks. And it's just like, that is just a sort of leader. That, but we always say, are. don't we? You're one of those players. And I know I'm, I don't want it to come across. I'm just saying it to you because it's on the pod. But you'd always want a player like you and your team because you literally lead by example. Like it's all good saying in yeah. the change room, right, we've got to be at it from the first minute, win your battles. But it's another thing actually going onto the pitch and doing it. And you're one of those players that you go to battle and you'd want yeah. you beside you. No, so sure. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, again, it, it kind of is also a thing... Even the most technical players, you can't guarantee you're going to have your best game every week. Mm -hmm. But the one thing you can control is your effort. And I swear, every every time I play next year, I remember my first game next yeah. year against Slough, I was like, this guy's everywhere. Yeah. I was like, he was making me look it's good. Funny, I was just standing yeah. there. It's funny you say that because I always remember that day. I remember we played Slough and you went to me, oh, I didn't get much of the ball. And I, obviously it was your new experience to yeah. Conference South level. And I was like, yeah, but it's what you do off the ball. Mm -hmm. Like... Mm -hmm. That makes you so so much more important. Like everyone has a bad day on the ball. Everyone can hold their hands up, but you can still affect the game mm -hmm. without yeah. touching it effectively. You know what I mean? We're we're bigging you up here, Samba, so you can't shout at us anymore in the pitch. <laughs> <Yeah. right? laughs> <laughs> Give us those free passes here, by the way. I can't promise that. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the half time, say, you've, been, you've been rubbish. What about the pod though? <laughs> yeah, that's good what do you mean? <laughs> we got you on the pod. <laughs> um, so come we're going back to Welling. Um, what was the next steps after that then? Uh, yeah, so obviously my first year went out on loan mm -hmm. um, to went, went Phoenix and I had a good spell there. Mm -hmm. um, and they, after the end of the season, they actually went to me, uh, I, I want to offer you like a, a deal. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but well in. And then I was like, oh, we'll give you, um, we'll give you like three, four times your wages. And mm -hmm. at the time I was what, 16, 17? I think I was on like 50 quid. I'm thinking, ah, oh, 200 quid a couple. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah. Do you know how many mini rolls you can buy? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, this challenge. brother loves mini rolls. Yeah. 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 Anyone, Anyone that wants to send him mini rolls to the club. Raspberry ones only. Raspberry yeah. ones only. <laughs> yeah. I've actually nicked one from you before and I don't like the raspberry ones. And I've bitten into it. I've gone, what nah. the fuck? See, <laughs> disrespect. That's so good. I've gone, that's Damn. a waste. What the hell? That's a waste. Damn. Yeah, so, yeah. From what? Sorry, what What step was Phoenix? Phoenix, at the time, they were scaffold prem. So, so one below five? Ryman and Seth. Yeah, yeah I think five. five. Yeah. So it's four leagues below Welling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Four leagues yes. below, but four times the wage. Come on. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. <laughs> that was a funny sport. <laughs> it is a very funny sport. But um, yeah, from obviously after my first year on loan as such, the second season, um, uh, yeah, we was in the conference prem still and I got obviously another deal and I was on the bench now. I was on the bench for probably the first 10 games. Um and then, yeah, just Gaffer was like, I want to give you an opportunity, da da da. And um, yeah, from that, I just found myself in the in the starting lineup. Um, and yeah, I played probably 30, 40 games that season. What age, wow. sorry? Was I was 18. 18 at the time, I believe. 
as some experience as national yeah. um, national league playing wow yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think Daisy I think Jamie Day moved on that season I think he went to Ebbsfleet right uh, and were you tempted to go with him did he um, no I, I wasn't tempted because I was uh, under contract and that and funny enough a, a manager coming at the time um, yeah wasn't wasn't really having me as such. So I was at the squad uh, and obviously we was going through probably a tough period in that league because it's mm -hmm. such a competitive league mm -hmm. and we was part, uh, we was actually, no, we was actually like three mornings at the time actually. But uh, we had such a young squad and um, yeah, I weren't in the squad. So I was like, I want to like go out and learn. I need to play. And that's always been my, my mindset. And um, the fans were actually giving the manager at the time a lot of like stick going like why is not Sam not playing and this that and the other which I have a lot of um, a lot of love for the Welling fans because they was, they was huge for me at the time um, I think that's actually a thing with fans as well is say a team's struggling <coughs> and you're a young lad they if there's a young player from the academy or that's been there for a few seasons mm -hmm. and they're playing regularly they're mm -hmm. always so much nicer and calmer if you're one of them, man. so to speak. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I know it's a cliche, but it's literally you are. hundred percent, hundred percent, and that's why sometimes it works better for managers when you are struggling to, you know, what let's play, play the kids, and yeah. see how they ever yeah. go, because no, the fans react so much better to it. Yeah, yeah. even at the sure. highest levels as well. Like you know, with United, when United's struggling, oh, but you have Kobe Mino doing well. It's like the fans, you know, if they go away from a disappointing result, well, the silver lining is at least oh, a couple kids from the academy look really good and yeah. will be good in the future. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Kind of appeases fans a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Even at our level. And I think like, as a young age, you're, like you said, you're tenacious, you're hungry and you want to do well. So when you get the opportunity, like you know what you're going to get. They're going to work hard. They're yeah. going to, listen, they might not be have that game management as such, but they're always going to give their all. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, he actually ended up getting a sack in the end and um, one of the players end up becoming the manager, like a player coach role with a few other um, coaches. And we actually managed to survive um, relegation. Um, yeah, it was huge. It was massive. And uh, it was like called the great escape, as they say. And uh, from that, um, the follow that year, I got up, obviously my it's a one year deal. And then I got offered a two year deal. And I was like, well, I'm probably not going to have as good season as I did before, because I've played 44 games in the conference prem. Yeah. Uh, a bit of insurance, as they say. Yeah. And I was, I wasn't on like nowhere near mega money. I think I was on like 250 maybe really? in the conference prem, but I was only 18, mm -hmm. 17, 18. So I was like, yeah, no brainer. Mm -hmm. So um, I signed the two year deal. Um, following season started and um, yeah, we we had an okay start. I personally I had, a, I had a very good start. I think I scored five five six goals before christmas um, is one of those goals the banger you've got on instagram still yeah, is that one of the, yeah. Trip, yeah. We'll, that. we'll put that we'll put that on oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah so i think that was on tv as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah so obviously i signed my two-year deal and then funny enough I, I actually signed with an agency um which obviously that was all new to me so they um they helped with a lot of things especially the the publicizing and like getting my name out there so obviously when i scored that goal it just went everywhere. And then I was having the son call me up and all these little things. And then I think there's a, I ended up scoring Grimsby away. Um, we lost like four, two, but I scored the first goal. And um, when it went on to like the national league highlights um, and they said, oh, well, Chelsea are watching me. And I was like, oh, that's mad. And after the game, the boys are like, oh, cool. You seen this? And I was like, what's that? And there was a news article, Daily Mail, Mirror, saying, um, I think it's Mourinho. Mourinho's looking at this 19-year-old non-league like thing. And I was like, nah, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> this ain't real. But obviously... And you're a Chelsea fan as well. I'm a Chelsea yeah. fan, yeah. So it was, it was, it was nice publicity. Uh, there weren't no real truth to it, mm -hmm. for sure. But obviously it gets your name circulating. No, of course. Um, yeah, so I've scored five goals leading up to Christmas. And us as a team probably weren't doing as great. And it was coming to that stage that that um money end of the season where we're fighting for our lives again and um i didn't notice until the end of the season when we got relegated is that peter bar apparently so so they said actually come in for me during christmas time um but um forever for whatever reason i think i think because i was doing well well in wanted to 
try and uh, keep there, mm -hmm. keep me and obviously try and keep us up and that. Mm -hmm. And nothing come from it. So obviously we got relegated. I was back in the <laughs> conference south. Um, Louis Fazakli, the manager at the time, got, got sat. And um, who come in? A new manager come in. Oh, um, Mark Goldberg mm -hmm. come in. Obviously the old Bromley manager, mm -hmm. he done excellent there. He come in and... Um, I was like, oh, oh, like, obviously I was had another year left on my deal and I was like, oh, I don't want to play Conference South. I want to try and stay in the mm -hmm. Conference mm -hmm. uh, Prem as you want to. You want to play the most competitive yeah, league. Especially at that age, you don't want to be dropping down. You want to just kick on and you're getting all that interest. Cool. So yeah. now that's, that season, obviously, prior, I was captain. Uh, I got called up to England C at, at like 19. So like, it was massive. It was a yeah. huge season. Like, it was unreal. Like, I went away with England C. They like, literally chaperone you they pick you up in a mercedes outside your house no drive you all the way to i think we went coventry warwick university done a training camp there mm -hmm. um and you was with the best of the best in the non-league like mm -hmm. the amount of the boys that i was with all them have well not all of them but a good portion of them gonna gonna have like great careers really? you've got to, you've got to tell the pod about the mascot story about you being <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's funny enough um <laughs> The one guy I know, he texted me the weekend because he's a Welling fan and he was, he was like, I'll oh, go easy on us. But he actually sent me footage. Basically, when I was um, captain of Welling, I was only like 19. And um, as you can see, I'm not the biggest of um, fellas, but there was a mascot and it was actually a, a 50 year old uh, geezer. And don't get me wrong, um, his name's called uh, Dave and he is huge. Like he is like, like six foot plus. Built like a wardrobe. He had full match kit on. <laughs> have you got a picture? I got a video. I have to get a video. I have to get a video. And like, he's grabbed my hand, <laughs> bent in mind, I'm like losing out the team. He's taking you like, with him. He's like walking along with me like this, yeah. And I, I so fuck, listen, at the time I was embarrassed, but when I look back on it, it was, it was brilliant. He was, was leading it, the was team. Was he for a stag do or something? Or? No, it was his 50th birthday. <laughs> and obviously, he's a huge Welling fan. And, um, yeah, that's what he's wanted to that's do. That's brilliant. No, as someone who can relate as well, you know when you you see a whole team of young kids and it's like, don't give me a tall one. Don't give me a tall one. <laughs> yeah, I've, sw yeah. I've switched yeah, mine yeah. before. Have you, have you seen like Napoli when uh, Insigne was there? Yeah. They don't give him one because he's five foot four. They gave him one that was like five foot ten. <laughs> you purpose. can't even see him. <laughs> oh. I actually saw a video of Insigne and the corner flag was taller than him. No, uh, one of the games, yeah, it's mental. I used, I'll tell you what, I would what shave. What player he was, by yeah, the way? I would FIFA. shave like eight inches off my height. I would go from six foot to five foot. Uh, <laughs> six foot. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I, I would be five foot to be able to play like he does. Oh my god, yeah, he was player. unbelievable. He wrote Ultimate Team. Yeah, what a player. Oh, serious. Used to waste all my coins on that brother. Used to love him. <laughs> I, I was more talking about real life, but yeah, he was good on FIFA. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, talk about FIFA. We came in today. Boney's absolutely fuming. Look on the screen. He's lost two 0 with Coventry to to Luton. Yeah, yeah. He's like. Oh, yeah. We let the boys down. Theory. I've let the boys I'm, down. I'm starting to think he's not a Chelsea supporter anymore. I think he's no, a Coventry yeah. supporter. Oh. Beat, to, beat to Luton. But we're going strong, by the way. The other day as well, we watched uh, Ipswich play Southampton. And obviously, Samiento scores that, the, the, the toe poke in yeah. the 90th minute. Boney runs out the room, comes back on. He's wearing he's wearing Connor Chaplin's shirt. And it's, Which is a size small, by the way. It's like it a crop is, top. It is skin tight. Skin tight. He's like this, sat on the sofa. Like, you said it fit me well. You're like, such a smooth one. Yeah, Connor come for him. Didn't he, say it, come didn't, me. He say, didn't he say it I mean, fit me well? I, I, it fitted him better than I thought. I'm gonna start, I have to start coming for him a bit more. But Bonnie, like, come on, you're in a small, this, this is not the right time to choose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it didn't fit hey, that um, well. Shout out your boy Peter Stroud as well, because he's been saying that we, we bully him too much. Stroudy, yeah. Stroudy, the bullying he brings is here it to upon stay. Himself. <laughs> it's here to stay. How do I bring it upon myself? It's just because my accent, you guys slate me, that's it. <gasps> wait until we show yeah. him, wait until we show him the, the, Easter, the Easter Sunday fit. Oh no! Some, yeah, I'm there, some like. people have class, oh. some people don't, bro. Listen, how do we forget that? Did you put it on Insta? Uh, you close only my friends, close friends. Close friends. Yeah, close I was getting, friends. I was getting uh, some girls saying I was looking good. Um, come on, <laughs> Cor Corny might come across really well in this episode, but he was absolutely <laughs> slating this brother yeah, listen, for that outfit. If anyone knows me, like, I don't take <laughs> yeah. things lightly. Yeah, that was you know horrendous. You know it's funny you mentioned Corny as well because when I was coming in, I was like. I can't wear this into training because I'm going to go gym. I'm going to come back. It's going to be ever. It's going to be cut up. My shoes are going to be hanging yeah, from the ceiling. Yeah. So I had a nice little Sainsbury's bag and I tucked it 
in the corner, and then I put it on, and everyone was slating me. But <laughs> even <laughs> even Gaffer and Craig. No, but the thing is, he put on his his blue and white like Andy Pandy looking shirt. Yeah. Then he put this sweater over the top. It's really bad. And he still had his towel. Yeah. He still had his towel around his waist. So but he takes off his towel and. <laughs> He's like, oh, we're going to it all the time. They yeah. get ready, like, top downwards. It like, makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's how no I do it. And then but he has some horrible chinos. <clears throat> in fairness, I didn't realise, in America, you do dress up well, didn't you? Yeah. Well, and he was coming over to mine, and I was thinking, I hope he doesn't think that my whole family are going <laughs> to dress up here. No, the funniest thing is we FaceTime your family, and Sean and Finn, and we Sean and your dad, exact same, exact same exact outfit. Same. No exact way. Same. And brothers hey. do not have drip. That's a, that's a cult. That hey, yeah. listen, some brothers have it, some don't. You know, come on. Oh, I was, great. I thought and I was. And you, like, my, my friend, do talk, not. Well, talking about drip, I'm actually drip tight in my new. Oh yeah, so let's try two Brits, one Yank top that um, was sourced by Auntie Debs. Shout out Auntie Debs again. <laughs> you might have seen it. If anyone who was on the live the other day. Auntie Debs is the girl. Well, she woman. The girl. She's actually one of the nicest people I've ever met. She sourced these tops. What? How many did she get? Three. Three, yeah. One for me, one for someone. <laughs> one Again, for the other one to Nacho, who will be watching this. Nacho's like our biggest fan, by the way. Nacho's oh, the girl. Yeah. Like, he's the girl. No, but it was so funny. The way you said it, you're like, oh, we should give this one to Nacho, shouldn't we? And I was like, I don't really have a choice. <laughs> it, was, it was a large anyway. It wouldn't fit him. It wouldn't fit him. Yeah, yeah you true. know, I'm too big. I'm bulking. I'm extra large these days. <laughs> <laughs> See, mate, your arms actually look big in the in the main show. Do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what setting you have it on, but cheers, man. <laughs> I'll be photoshopping him uh, later, don't worry. All right, let's get back sorry. to our guests. You know, I feel like Courtney's like, let's go. Sorry, This is a normal <laughs> day with me. Yeah, um, yeah so obviously, yeah, I feel like I was sad. Obviously, I had a two year deal. Um, we got relegated, um, which left me with my last year and obviously Mark Goldberg coming at the time. And I didn't want to remain in the conference South, I wanted to stay, stay in the conference Prem. But um, so my agent was trying to sort out various things, but it's difficult when you're on the contract. So I had a conversation with uh, Goldberg at the time and he was like, listen, I want you to stay, blah, blah, blah. He actually increased my, my, my wage and I was like, oh, even better. So... Like Welling was a huge club for me. They gave me my, my I guess my professional start. I guess mm -hmm. in my career, so mm -hmm. that was a very loyal club, and I wanted to be loyal back to them. So yeah, obviously I stayed with them. Done whole of preseason, played the first league game away, played Tuesday night, and then I get a call Wednesday morning after the Tuesday game, and um, it's Jamie Day. And at the time, he was the Braintree gaffer that was, they were in the conference prem. And he was like, between us, you're going to get a call. And I was like, okay. He's like, mm, Goldberg's letting you go. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, basically, um, for whatever reason. I've basically, where it was, I was, I was playing week in, week out. He had other players he brought in. Um, but obviously, I was playing well. And I was on minimal wages and he had players on the bench that were on better Big wages dough. than me. And he was like, well, I can't, I like, it don't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it did bother me because I was back with the gaffer that I really love playing under and I you. was in a league higher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, um, two days later, I was training with Braintree and I was back in the conference prem. Uh, just to stop you there, you said about how you had loyalty to Welling and you wanted to stay even though in the conference south. Um, it's important to say you still work for them now, all this all this time after. Yeah, yeah. So obviously I'm a, a coach um, with the scholarship program, but that didn't really come about till probably a few years after. But obviously, yeah, a massive link with the club, uh, obviously all the grassroots side. It just shows that you, when you left, it wasn't like no bad blood, no nothing. It's just it's just football at the end of the not day. No, I have a lot of, not that I use Facebook, but I have a lot of Welling fans on Facebook and they, they still touch base with me now saying like congrats on obviously what we've achieved and, mm -hmm. and very, very, various other things that have happened in my life. Mm -hmm. Then we played them this season. You had like 100 people waiting for you after all the kids, all the parents. Yeah, I remember that. Was, oh, wait, was really nice. yeah. I actually didn't know... Who, that was a dreadful game, by the way. I didn't know who the, the kids were supporting. They're supporting Welling because they were Welling kits, yeah, a lot of them, yeah. or they're supporting us. Yeah, obviously, because I obviously coached a lot of them through either Rondos or Welling... Um, yeah, I think every time I've played against them, there's been probably a massive influx mm -hmm. in uh, fans because obviously they've come down and watched and mm -hmm. supported. And that's excellent. You have like the David Beckham effect on the MLS. You have the Sam Corn effect at Lala. <laughs> 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 there we go. <laughs> and, uh, well, we've got to talk, we'll talk about it a bit later, but with the, the goal you scored against Stevens and stuff, with the, there's a little video mm -hmm. that they did, wasn't it? And yeah. then even the goal against uh, Ipswich. 
So yeah. I think uh, we'll try and we'll try and link them and put them on here. But they're, yeah, they they recreated them all yeah. the kids. It's I so saw cool. That. So I haven't cool. seen that. Oh, it's it so good. It's a show me after. Uh, but anyway, so you've managed to to stay in the national league with Braintree. How did that first season? How did that go? Um, yeah, obviously Braintree being part time. I remember anyone that's been Braintree, you know, we trained on the pitch beside the ground, um, and when it gets winter time, it's horrendous. But yeah, so I think we was mediocre coming up to uh, Christmas and I, Jamie, they actually got the set. Um, so when your manager you've gone with or sport you into the club, you're a bit obviously devastated, but um, that's how I actually had the introduction of uh, meeting Hakan. Um, oh. So yeah, that was my first introduction with Hack. And um, funny enough, we, we didn't, not that we didn't get along, he didn't see me as a starter in his plans. And which, listen, Anyone with uh, knows football, that it's is football, yeah. it is football. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. life. Um, but you have to ride the 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 highs and the lows. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually went to my agent at the time. I was like, I want to go out and loan. I want to. I need to be playing. So I think clubs come into me. I think Hampton and Richmond come in for me. Um, and obviously, I was playing dumb at the time because I'm pretending that I have no doing with it. But how can actually put me in the office and then. Hack was like, oh, like, um, um, Hampton have come in for you. They want to, like, go and loan. And I was like, um, oh, really? <laughs> Benny Mike. Benny Mike. <laughs> what? what? Yeah. How did you do that? Benny Benny just go off the phone to your agent. <laughs> Get me out. Yeah. And, and, and Benny Mike actually met the gaffer at, like, uh, like Cobham Services <laughs> really? uh, to have a conversation with him. Um, so he was like, oh, I don't want you to leave. And listen, he was... Um, blowing smoke up my ass as I was saying it's like oh you didn't realise you played England C and mm -hmm. you played hundred and so games in the Commerce Prem and um, he was like be patient be patient and every manager does it because mm -hmm. they want to keep everyone happy and that mm -hmm. is football mm -hmm. so yeah I remained patient I stayed at Braintree and um, I, I got my start and um, yeah I was I ended up scoring a brace on my return played the following game scored another goal so I scored like three and two um <laughs> And we, we tried to escape relegation, but it was uh, far too like difficult. It was mm -hmm. um, it was that yeah it was a, it was a it was a weird situation, especially like financially with mm -hmm. the club, which is which I won't go into. But it was yeah, but it opened your eyes into non league football mm -hmm. at such a young age. Mm -hmm. So um, so at, at what age was this? I was, must have been twenty at the time. And you've had it's, two relegations. Two relegations. So much like experience in men's football by the yeah. age of twenty. It's, it's mental, crazy. Isn't it? Yeah, captain of a of a step one team, two relegations. That's the experience that some people get in their careers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think by the age I was 20, I must have played near enough hundred, hundred plus games in wow. conference prem. Um, but like you said, I had two relegations on my CV. And when you hear people go, I don't have any CV, but it don't define nothing because listen, as anyone knows, you play in a competitive league and, if you're not in a competitive team as such, mm -hmm. then it's, it's very hard. As long as you do your bit and mm -hmm. you try and flourish from mm -hmm. the group, then that's all you can do. And with budgets and everything, and especially in the conference, and we see it now, and even last season when we got relegated, the the difference the difference between the top and the bottom is mental. So it's financially, mental. is it? Financially, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's I think something came out this week that when Wrexham won, uh, yeah, won the league, gosh, they spent 6.7 million on wages. You told me that yesterday. Including all staff and stuff, but that's absolutely mental. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mark, I was listening to yeah, Mark nice. White podcast the other day, and he was saying they go to grounds now. They have like poor 3G, whatever, and they go play away matches, six, 7,000 people, four-sided hospitality. It's just like, it, there's like two halves of the league almost, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, literally. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that shows how tight it is down the bottom. It's like, yeah. 13th place can still get relegated yeah. with like four games to go. Yeah. What was um, what was your next step after that, Sambo? Um, so I come to a stage where uh, obviously I went to major and I, like, um, I, I left Braintree. Well, a lot of the players left Braintree. Um, and I was like, oh, can you sort me out? And he'd come up with um, various other clubs like Concord Rangers mm -hmm. and uh, obviously people that have been Concord. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, but I, mean, I actually, um, I actually <laughs> went and trained with them. Uh, <laughs> On the island yeah, uh, yeah i don't know where i was but um it was like a school field and as much as like there was good people there it just yeah it didn't quite fit with me at the time and mm -hmm. it come to a point where i was like joe you know what uh i'm gonna like drop down i tried actually going back to welling 
actually done pre-season well in and um, that, yeah, it didn't work out. Um, so I actually got a call from Gary Alexander, um, the old mere wall player. Yeah, yeah. And he was at Greenwich Borough at the time. And that's when I really wanted to like, okay, if I'm going to go part-time, then I can focus on my coaching career. Mm -hmm. So, so I already at that age, you already had, I want to be a coach. Yeah, future. so from when I left school or left my scholarship at 16, 18, I actually was employed straight after to be like a like a, a, a football coach. So I oh, coached wow. like year seven girls and stuff. So during, once I finished coaching with Wellin, whoever it was, I'd go coach. Mm -hmm. um, so I've done it forever since I left school. So yeah, so obviously I went part-time with Greenwich Borough and I honestly had like probably one of the best seasons in terms of like enjoyment. Mm -hmm. What I've league gone, were they in, sorry, bro? They were in the Ryman South. So four. Right. So yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I've gone from a brain tree with like an up and down season. Mm -hmm. um, then I've gone to a place where like I loved it. Mm -hmm. Like the people, I had a Ram, you were excellent. We were doing well in the league. Um, like, and I was going part time, so you have so much spare time. So mm -hmm. I was actually playing ga uh, playing golf with the gaffer and the physio like no before training like two three times a week. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It was so good. Yeah, but playing just as much golf as football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, had a, we had like a group chat with like ten people. Like, who's no wonder you're so good now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Honestly, it was, it was unreal. And um, yeah, so um, financial issues happened there, um, whereby Gary actually left, and um, an old coach actually come in, Paul Barnes, like great lad. Um, at, I had at Welling, funny enough, and um, we actually got to play off semis. Um, and we didn't make it through to the semis, but it was a good season. Um, so next season, following season, Garrick Zahn is at Ashford, gone Ashford. He's like, oh, cool, I want you to come Ashford. And I was like, I was like, yeah, of course, it's no brainer. Like, I mm -hmm. loved it. Um, and I actually got one of my best ever, like, deals at the time with of step what well, they step for step four, yeah. um, got a signing on fee i was no like way. what is this um <laughs> hitting the big time aren't yeah we? literally <laughs> New set of it, it wasn't colossal <laughs> yeah, but, that's right, part of the um deal. yeah it's a no-brainer i was back with mark the gaffer that i love playing under he's a great coach mm -hmm. and um like assistant in uh mackie and um yeah we had a great season and we we um he actually, funny enough, he actually got sacked again. Um, just could a few bad results, which listen, everyone has reasons or yeah, whatnot. But at the time, but yeah, we actually continued getting to the player final. Mm -hmm. And I always remember we played Hastings in the playoff semi, and um, I scored a brace in the game. And uh, we went extra time, and there was a penalty in the hundred and twentieth minute of extra time, literally the last kick of the game. And it was, um, I think it was 2-2 two -two at the time. And there's like, obviously I was penalty taker and um, I scored it. But it was like one of the best moments for me. Hat trick in a playoff hat trick. It wasn't a hat, it wasn't a hat. That was my, that was my second that goal was for the game. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, but that was the goal to get us through the playoff final. Um, so that was unreal, unreal. Oh. Cause Hastings were a top team at the time in but that league. You had a really good successful uh, scoring season that year, didn't you? Yeah, I scored. 21 goals in 42 games or something. Wow. Yeah. Like, not a bad return that's from Central Midfield. Yeah, yeah. 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 One in two. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great season for me. Um, and then, yeah, we we lost in the playoff final. Um, I scored another pen then, uh, but we lost. I think pen we lost. Merchant. I was yeah. just going to say. Pen I was yeah. just going to say. So you what, it's never been me, but yeah. but uh, Until this year as well, yeah. Pen Merchant. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously we didn't we didn't get promoted, but yeah, another great season. And I remember, um, I think it was on the way to my player final or the day before, Hakan actually called me up. He's like, and I was like, oh, you got like a wrong number sort of thing. <laughs> and I was like, you're right, Hakan. He's like, you're right, mate. How you been? Da, da, da. And I was like, yeah, good, thanks. He's like, oh, how are you getting on this year? And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm actually doing all right. And he's like, oh, like um, I said, I've actually got player final. I think it was like tonight or tomorrow. And he's like, oh, where's that? At? And uh, I said, like, I think it was at Horsham's Grand, which is anyone knows miles away. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, I might come down to that. Not a chance, did he come down <laughs> to <laughs> um, But he actually, like, called me up. And he was like, oh, well, call me after. Let me know you get on. Let me know you get on. And um, obviously, he must have caught wind of it. And he's, he's called me. He was like, I want to bring you to... He was actually, prior to that season, he actually become manager of Maidstone. 
Ah, uh, so it all started then. Yeah, I think it was the season they got relegated. <coughs> they went through a patch mm-hmm. with loads of different managers after mm-hmm. Jay Saunders, and he was the one that come in with John Steele. So when that season they got relegated, he phoned me up and was like, I want you to bring you to Maidstone, da 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 And I was like, what an opportunity to mm-hmm. be back at a, a conference staff yeah, team. Maidstone was huge, like good infrastructure in terms of the Gallagher and mm-hmm. whatnot. And I was like, yeah, happy days. I met John Steele, which he has a massive career, like mm-hmm. huge career. Anyone mm-hmm. knows uh, what he's achieved, it's massive. So, um, but he scared the life out of me. Oh my God, John Steele. Really? really? Yeah, I could then have to take him. But listen, you get good cop, bad cop. And, nah. um, yeah, but yeah, so he brought me to the club and I was signed for Maidstone and we we, we um, had our first year in the Conference South after they'd been relegated. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting one because considering I've played that level and above, I've gone back to the level and I I probably found it difficult, I think, because of the the amount of like fans they get mm-hmm. and they and obviously they want instant success. Of course. Um mm-hmm. and it, it was it was really hard because the fans, not all the fans, but as fans do, they don't always take to players. Mm-hmm. And you could like I'm not a fan of it no more, but I used to be one that looks on the forum or mm-hmm. Twitter. Yeah. Guilty. Yeah. Guilty. Guilty. Yeah, you do <laughs> because you want you want so that. So Joe Smith has seen every piece of <laughs> yeah. negative press about him. Yeah. And positive. Career. Hey, and positive. Yeah, yeah, of course. But and it's positive. important to say that because when you're younger, you're looking for that recognition and it's actually quite a bad cycle to be in because you'll be searching for like the praise. And then you'll start coming across like negative stuff and it can have like a, yeah. quite a bad effect on you. you and, know? and the issue with doing stuff like that as well is if you see 10 positive things and one negative, you just, the, you just see, negative. You think the negative, it and, stays and we've with all you. been there. I yeah. used to do it when I was, when I was younger. I used to type my name in on Twitter after a game to see what had been said. Yeah. I used to get called fat. <laughs> <laughs> he still I does. I <laughs> should have done that. <laughs> nice. Come, start comfort eating, get the chocolates out. <laughs> like, can we be think I'm just fat? ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sam. We'll carry on. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was, it was difficult. Um, like my 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 parents and my brother are very supportive, but my mum was the worst because she would read it and uh, mm-hmm. listen. My mum, she follows me everywhere, and she as much as she's been around football for so long, she still don't has a clue mm-hmm. to a certain to a certain extent. So she would like feedback to me on what people said, and obviously. You don't really want to hear it, but mm-hmm. she's doing it because she wants to like basically make you aware of the situation. Mm-hmm. My mum's the same now with uh, with stuff in that she's in the Facebook forum for Maidstone. Yeah. So she'll screenshot stuff and send it to me. No, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to read this. Yeah, I don't, I don't, she, I honestly, no, no, don't you don't care, need or. to do that because you just seize it anyway. Because be- I got Ben Topham's phone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we go scrolling through after yeah. games. <laughs> We're having a Nando's, like what the hell? <laughs> this guy doesn't have a clue, does yeah, he? Yeah, literally that <laughs> stuff. But no, it's, it's, yeah, I got into a bad cycle where T Fair, Hack and Stilly were they were good to me because they were still like consistent in terms of playing me. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fans wasn't really giving to me really. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I always remember one tweet and, I, and it always sits with me. And uh, I still see this fan tweet till today and it, <laughs> it makes it like the most negative game ever. <laughs> um, but he, I can actually guarantee I know who yeah, it is already. And uh, he said, Sam Korn and Seydou Khan at the time. Better mind Seydou's now playing in League One. He's Swindon. Yeah, he's Swindon. he's Swindon. captain Swindon. of Swindon, isn't he? Yeah, yeah wow. like superb player. Um, like he's done so well for himself. And um, he was like, <laughs> me and him are the worst players to ever like put a Maystone shirt on. Like that. Wow, and, really? Um, but like stuff like that. My brother's always said to me, listen, the reason why you've always stayed at clubs for so long is because... You, like you, you're loyal. They love you, and you, like he said, you always prove people wrong. Mm-hmm. Like from a young age, mm-hmm. people go, "Oh, he's too small. He's too this. Mm-hmm. He's too that." But then I'd always do something to then prove them wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I get that that like fuel to mm-hmm. want to do do my best. Um, so yeah, we that season was a a strange season. There was a lot of things going on in terms of players getting put out on the transfer list, which I've never experience before and I'm thinking oh I'm going to end up on the transfer list mm-hmm. so like it's October time like quite early in the season and there's people being put on the transfer list <laughs> getting called off and I'm like this is crazy this is mm-hmm. mad um, yeah really weird but obviously that season I think they brought in 20 new players mm-hmm. so it was a proper transitional year mm-hmm. um, and it come to January February time and um, co- uh, well, the league 
got suspended and because of COVID. Um, and then the league actually got voided. Mm -hmm. So everyone knew about COVID. We had, we had a, we um, all got put on furlough, um, which no one knew about. I remember we got brought into the office. Um, we got brought into training that shit and it was snowing. And we looked at the Gallagher pitch and it was still had loads of snow in it. So it was like, oh, we ain't training then. And I was like, oh, by the way, the, you're all put on furlough. And I was like, oh, what's that mean? And I was like, well, you can, you can, you can like play, but you can't get paid. <laughs> Or you can get eighty percent of your wages, and um, like uh, it's it's like a no brainer. Listen, mm -hmm. like it's you, you need your money, you need to live, and um, yeah, obviously the the season got voided two weeks after that anyway, so it didn't make no difference. So yeah, COVID happened, and um, got offered another deal with Maystone uh, when COVID returned, which was such a strange time because I think we spoke about it before you we returned and there's no fans. Um, but that was probably my, that helped me massively because I had no, no outside yeah, noise course. and I could just focus on the game. Um, bit like last night, there's no fans there. It's literally you against another opposition. Mm -hmm. like it, you just play your football mm -hmm. and you hope for the best. And that was massive for me. We, we'd done okay. Um, I think we had loads of games in hand and if we won them, we would have ended up like second at the time. But it was another voided season. So it was... Um, but it was a huge, massive confidence booster mm -hmm. because the fans that weren't there could still watch the game live. And then they was actually giving like half decent feedback. They're going like, yeah. oh, Sam Corn looked good tonight. And I was like, oh, tell me what, like, they'll get on getting there and getting yeah, there. Yeah. And um, the following year we got offered uh, another deal. Um, and this was when fans were all, all back in the stadium. And um, that was obviously an unbelievable season. Unbelievable season, playing well. Um, <coughs> good scoring season for myself and we end up winning the, the league and everything that you dream of like I've never won anything in my professional career and to say I've won the Conference South is like a huge achievement for yeah. myself um, talk me through the cause was it against Chelmsford was it what was the day you actually won the league was yeah it against Chelmsford Chelmsford on the Bank holiday? No, on the Saturday. Of the what was it like when that final whistle? Because I heard there were murmurs of going around. Like, yeah. How did it all come about? Oh, it was it was unreal. So we went for a, like a crazy period of like just winning, winning, winning. I think like out of twenty five games, I think we won like twenty three of them. And obviously Dawkins, um, Dawkins were flying high, and we lost to Dawkins twice that season, um, and we was like, ah, oh, we like. Mm -hmm. so but we just worry about ourselves, and you know it's like when when you're chasing the pack it's easier mm -hmm. when you're at the top it's harder yeah so yeah. we were just worrying about ourselves game after game game after game and um i remember we played chelmsford on the saturday and i think woke it um Dawkins were playing somewhere else i think uh, st albans, st. albans. I think. and um yeah we was during the game we've gone one new up but it was one of them games where it's a bit touch and go i think i hit the post and was like oh like is it going to be one of them days mm -hmm. Uh, and then Barham just scored before half time. Uh, and then we come out second half and we, um, yeah, we just ended up like scoring another. And I think Chelsea got one back, which made it a little bit nervy. And then we end up scoring a third or whatnot. But during the game, I think it was about 75th minute, 80th minute, we heard murmurs in the crowd saying, St. Albans had just scored. But knowing like you can't register it, but you can hear it and you're going like, and I'm looking at Regan going like, looking at him going like, oh my God. And like, it's, it's weird because he went quiet. You really could hear mad. people like, it was mad. And, um, but that, honestly, that 10 minute buzz was crazy. Oh. We was running around like headless chickens. We was like, we are winning it today. Mm -hmm. We are winning. We ain't losing this game no matter what. There's people flying in for tackles and whatnot. And uh, I just remember the final whistle and it still gives me goosebumps now. The final whistle went and I just dropped down to my knees and I just started crying. Cause like, you know, it's like you play a whole season and you go from pre-season in yeah. June, July, uh, it gets to like August and you go all that time to like April and you've achieved something that you've always wanted to achieve from like a young age and like all the like, all the emotion just come out of me. And, and you only be... get so many years to play in your career as exactly. well. Yeah. So you've done a whole year of it. And it's not like, you know, you can do it for like <laughs> 60 years. 
Like, there's only a finite amount that you can play. And, and bro, bro, to do that, especially after two relegations. Yeah, exactly. People, come, people do their career without winning anything as well. Yeah, of course. And, like, you, those moments are literally why you play football for, for to win things and all, you know? It must have been... And Sam Corn. I haven't won a league before. Sam Corn has more trophies than Harry Kane. That's crazy. <laughs> That's, That's cold. That's <laughs> crazy. Cold. And like you said there. that after the relegations and the, the really hard initial season at Maidstone, there must have been some doubts doubts in your head that maybe a moment like this would ever probably come yeah like i don't think you ever go into a season saying you're gonna like get promotion or you're gonna win it you just you just want to do well yourself you want to mm -hmm. be a competitive team um and yeah as that season went on like we, we was winning games we were like we, yeah it was crazy like the 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 squad we had was actually so good but when we all got put together we didn't think oh like this is a tight winning team mm -hmm. yeah um you just play with each other and you just end up that cohesion and that team spirit just gets you through. And um, yeah, we just had a great bond, like such, such a different mixture between the squad um, and you boys know a lot of them and it just seemed to work. Yeah. And, and then, well, then unfortunately, okay. Oh, you... But I remember from afar, like, cause obviously checking the results and all when I was in Ireland. And then I remember Dawkin being well ahead of Maystone to the point where I was like, ah, oh, well Dawkin are just going to win it. I'll check in when the playoffs start. Yeah. And then, like, I'm seeing, because I've followed the club on Twitter, I'm starting to see all these results. I'm like, let me just look at the table. And he was, like, ahead of Dorking. I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, what's going on here? But I remember having played at the Gallagher in that season, being 2-0 up, then you nicking one before half time. Yeah. And then we had a man sent off. And as soon as that man was sent off, the the reaction in the crowd, yeah. it was mental. Spurs going towards the game yeah. end, And I was like, oh, my God, we're actually going to yeah. lose this game. And the, it's, it's crazy how... Especially in our league, we're one of the biggest teams, obviously, and the amount of power that the fans can have over a game is crazy. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, we're playing them this weekend, but Farnborough at home, the last 20 minutes when we were knocking on the door down 1-0, mm -hmm. it was like we wouldn't have been allowed to leave there without a decent result, no, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was it was so positive, and any time someone made a tackle, you have the roar of 3,000 people. It almost just feels inevitable that you're going to score, that you're going to get something. Yeah. yeah, it's just saying that season, it was crazy, I think... We played Ebbsfleet in the October and um, yeah, like Ebbsfleet obviously were flying in that league. Uh, they had like a massive like budget and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The players that like Chris Solly that I used to watch when I was a mm -hmm. Charlton Chris season Solly, yeah. on and yeah. what a player. And, that, a some, and I remember I scored a brace and we won 3-2 and it was a hell of a game. They were two braces against them that year. No? Yeah, so that was the year I scored, uh, I think I scored like four braces. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, that that game kind of like was like a kickstart because we was like, oh, we beat Ebbsfleet, mm -hmm. and then because we went through um, a tough patch prior to that, I think we drew or we lost like uh, six games. Where I think we like either drew or lost them, and there was like doubts over Hackham, and we was like, oh, not again, like not like you don't want your manager to be sacked regardless. Mm -hmm. And um, from that game onwards, because it was a Tuesday night, we beat Ebbsfleet three two, and it kind of like just kickstarted our season Everything. again. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just went on from that. It was yeah, it was crazy. And after the game, I think like the fans like ran onto the pitch and mm -hmm. that. And I've never seen anything like it. And I think from then to the end of the season, and obviously when all us boys went away, it was like the best two weeks of honestly my life. It went to Marbella, wasn't it? Yeah, but just like everything, like we won the league on the Saturday. It was bank holiday, so we went to Welling on the Monday, and but. On the set, obviously, we won the league, so everyone went out. I was going to say, you were all celebrating. We, we got called into training on the Sunday, <laughs> the next day, and I've never seen people turn up in the same clothes as the night before. <laughs> uh, <coughs> like everyone was hanging, but we was just... No, but we didn't train. We just went in there. It was such a good vibe. We went out for a bit of Carried food. on. Carried yeah, on drinking. And then we turned up to Welling on the Monday, and, um, yeah, like, boys are just... Like, just, yeah, people were probably still drunk. So I was going to say. But, uh, yeah, we lost the Welling game. But it, we and that actually care. kept Welling up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Billy Ricky went down instead. Because only one team went down that year. Because yeah, it was. Like, it was. Ooh, there was, ah, like, there was yeah. like 21 teams in the league, or it was yeah, a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but, yeah, I remember, we, obviously, we actually played off all right against Welling, and there's a few, like, referee decisions that went against us, but we weren't only bothered. Obviously, it was a sellout. It was mm. all the Maystones fans were there and that. And, um, yeah, it was unreal. Um, and then we went into the last game of the season against Hampton and it was a sellout four and a half or whatever it is. And um, yeah, we won the last game and 
gaffer George Lacombe oh, actually cool. scored. Yeah. yeah, and obviously that was his retiring yeah. game. Um, what a way so to end your what career. a goal as well. Yeah, yeah no, mental. What mental. Goal, it's like Edge. Of, we'll put it in, obviously. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Edge of the box and he wraps it. <laughs> <Doesn't> <laughs> Ain't lucky. Don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah literally all the time in training, he's like. Just like I did in my last game. Yeah. <laughs> like takes a touch and just yeah. whips it over it's, the bar yeah, all the funny. time. And he one of the craziest send-offs I've ever seen, you know, like when a player retires, they'll clap him off. He ran back like in front of the Genko, yeah, like got in his knees in front of the yeah. Genko yeah, like and the, then got clapped the off. The Genko, everyone had like yellow or black like sheets or whatever. And that, that was that unreal. And I'm always there's a picture of like the huddle before the game and you got the Genko in the back. And it's like it's so like cool, it's so sick. But what these boys like actually probably haven't experience before is that the Genko never used to be segregated. Yeah, so I've heard they that. used to have the whole Genko would just be Maidstone fans. Oh really? Until when we went to the National League. Because yeah, they used to be on the, the right hand side. Yeah. On the yeah. right side yeah. But now the right hand side of the Genko as you're looking at it, that's now away fans. But yeah. that used to be all Maidstone. Right, okay. So you can imagine when Maidstone were actually attacking that end. Yeah. It yeah. was mental. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was mad and obviously yeah. Like listen to be able to lift the the cup or the trophy, um yeah, it was a massive, massive day. And obviously my family were there. Uh, they come onto the pitch. We got pictures together and that I always hold that memory. But mm -hmm. yeah, from that two weeks onwards, it, it was like the best two weeks of my life. Like such a massive buzz. And then we all went away as a team. And um, yeah, the, it was the best three days in my band. Yeah, I was going to say. My <laughs> and is it one of those where like, you're, you're on such a high, but you get back and you're like, oh my, like, we've gone from being the best team in this league to probably expected to go to. I, usually, when teams go up, they're kind of expected to be down yeah. and around the relegation well, it was, places. It's funny that because um, obviously, we did, I thought we, 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 there was a, all of us were doing well, but I was having a good season. And obviously, Gaffer actually pulled me in the office around Christmas. And um, <laughs> I don't know how much to say this, but I will. Um, <laughs> We can always edit it. Yeah, no, it don't matter. So, um, yeah, obviously I was doing well when uh, there was murmurs of obviously Bromley interested. Mm. And uh, Gaffer actually called me up on a Sunday and I was like, Gaffer never calls me. And obviously I've just finished coaching. And he was like, you right, Sam? And I was like, yeah. He was like, listen, you've been excellent, blah, blah, blah. Um, I want to offer you a new deal. And I was like, oh, like, okay, yeah. Like, da, da, da. He was like, we'll talk on um, thingy. But then I had obviously inside knowledge about Bromley um, but we was doing so well in the league and like I said I wanted to win things and sometimes you're 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 happy where you are mm -hmm. like why would you want to go somewhere else where there's a potential of you winning something and you've got a good core good bunch and you're enjoying your football so when I've got offered a new deal it was a no-brainer for mm -hmm. me and obviously it worked it it worked out to a certain extent because I won the league mm -hmm. and I was back in National Prem with a club that I enjoyed being with. How was the um how was the National League season for you? Um a little bit different. Yeah. What Very was different. that like for you? Do you know what? We had a great start. Mm -hmm. Um and I, I truly believe that if we had more depth within our squad and a few personnel didn't get injured, mm -hmm. I think we were doing more than mm -hmm. more than fine. But like we said, it's it's a tough old league. Um, and I think our first few games we've done well. I think mm -hmm. we got like 11 points. Remember your brace against York? Yeah, York um, scored like two goals and um, I thought, oh, that's like kickstart like, kick our season and um, it, we kind of never really got going. We we played well in games but just didn't have that, that cutting edge yeah, or yeah. whatever it was. It was like defensive and yeah, difficult. And uh, I remember... Obviously, Hack actually got the sack, um, which was a, a, like, a, a like, horrible to see. You don't want to see anyone, especially uh, out of anyone, I think, Sol or Vats. I actually had a really good relationship with Hack mm -hmm. yeah. and Terry. And, um, yeah, to see them go, it was a nice, but it come to a point where maybe we needed a change to try and save us. I don't know. We needed, uh, to be honest, I think we are just in such a... Like how you got in a rhythm of winning, yeah. winning constantly, just going to games, being so positive. It was the complete opposite. Yeah. Where? Because that's when I come in as well. Yeah. When did, when did. we conceded a goal, it was like, damn, we're we're gonna lose again. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? That yeah, was yeah. kind of how everything. It felt would just kill the everything because we would start really well, mm -hmm. um, and we'd be in the game. But then once it was that, once it scored or something, it's just like, oh, 
here we go again. And then all of a sudden you're you're chucking everyone forward, Literally. trying to get something out of the game, and then you're two 0 down. Because I think like... I think Bar Barham Barhamwood Barhamwood and <laughs> might have Barham been Barhamwood. Bar- 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. What did he say last night about Gloucester? Glowchester. Glowchester. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He went, Honestly. oh, is, um, is Glowchester in the, the National League North? Yeah. And I went, huh? <laughs> wow. I butchered it. And Gav was like, like, Gav was like away from us. Gav was like, I don't know, you know. But no, going back to that bar, <laughs> man. Bar Borenwood and I think maybe Halifax. We were actually playing really well in games, weren't we? I think I remember when your first game when we played in a trophy. Uh, Nuts, Not yeah. 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 Nuts. Obviously, Gaffer was his first... It was his first game. First game. And uh, we actually started to get like a, a bit of a base to us. And then Wrexham. Then Wrexham. Then we played we really well against... Yeah. And, uh, but we were so good. It was right at the end. It was so good. And obviously, yeah. I think it was like the last like, 10 minutes. Uh, I remember your chat after, after that, actually, was quite powerful when you were saying if we just cut out these individual errors... We can do well in this league. Yeah, but, because in that game we were two 0 down. Yeah, and we, we came, came back to two two. Yeah, and it was kind of like, oh well, if we can do this against the big dogs, exactly. Then, why can't we do but this? We, in every we should game? never yeah. have been two 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 nil down. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of like our season in terms of like we was always putting a, we was like two steps behind mm-hmm. to get us going. Giving ourselves a mountain to climb. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, but it has to do with habits as well. Like winning is a habit. You yeah. know, you pick up wins. You go into games believing you're going to win, and then yeah. if you're losing. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing, and I think that, that obviously, I think we after we beat Knots in the trophy, we we then had a couple of games and we played Eastleigh, and that kind of s- summed up our season because um, I I ended up getting injured. I remember it was such a good Horrible game. Tackle, um, tackle yeah. Eastleigh was was it four one in the end? Four nil, four nil in the end, like great result. But I I still remember it today where literally, Jeez, yeah. yeah, like literally dinked the ball over the lad and he just obviously caught me and at the time like you don't think the worst I was like oh that hurt and I got back up tried playing I was like Joe what probably yeah. um, probably I best forgot one. that that was the four and that was in the FA Trophy yeah I think that was one. Feb time yeah. Um, yeah so obviously I was had a bit of head loss but it was such a great result and obviously we didn't have many results to mm-hmm. celebrate I think we went out in Maystone didn't we mm-hmm. and I was like hobbling around like Harry's and that trying to go up the spiral stairs and I remember the, the next two days I literally couldn't move my knee and I was like Oh, I don't know. But then I started to um, get a little bit of movement. I thought, oh, it's probably not as bad. So obviously the club sent me for a scan and uh, obviously we had to wait a few days for the scan. And I remember Smudge, the physio, tapping me on the shoulder and he went, it's not good, mate. And I was like, oh, like, what's that mean? Obviously you think the worst. Of course. And obviously with your knee, I'm thinking, oh, like, not my ACL. Or mm-hmm. da, da, da. And um, yeah, come back that I uh, fully ruptured my MCL. Um, and I was like, Okay, well, what does that mean? Because we're like it's the it's the unknown for us. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Well, we're probably gonna have to have surgery." Um, and I was like, "Okay, how long's that?" And he was like, "Oh, we'll get it done soon as." And then it'd be like, like three months, four months, or whatever. And I was like, "Okay, okay." Um, so when I see a consultant up um, uptown, and um, it was all booked in. Um, and literally for the week after and then that fell through because of insurance or whatnot um two weeks later or a week later i went to see another consultant and um he couldn't get me booked in till like may and i was like well i want to be back for the new season um so then four weeks down the line prior to doing it bear in mind i was walking i was walking fine um but just limited in movement um i went to see another consultant and he actually went joe what um I think you could actually get away of have, not having surgery, but then it's like a, it's like the unknown. You can't see. Mm-hmm. So he was yeah. like, "You either have the surgery and you kind of know the outcome, uh, or you do the rehab." And but then as a player, you don't want to go under the knife. No, you know, it's last it, resort. Personally. It's like the last resort. Yeah. I know some people who say they actually enjoy it. That feeling of when they wake up and they're still like zoned out. And I'm like, <laughs> no, but I think, think, what's wrong with you? I'm not one of those people. Yeah, I think maybe when we had our yeah. injuries because our. In- like when I have an ankle injury, my yeah. first one, you have the injury and you're playing with it for so long. It could have been you that actually said it. No, I, I did quite like it. But yeah. I was like, it was so much relief to actually just get the, done, the injury yeah. done, it, get it all yeah, sorted yeah. and know that I'm actually going to get better. Yeah. Then, it was my hamstring where they said, uh, if you get it done, like the the chances of it going again is like very slim. Whereas yeah. you can actually let it heal naturally. Yeah. 
but it, you've got a high chance of it going again. I was like, just put me under, like, yeah, get yeah. it done, sorted. I, I'm someone that like, if a doctor or physio tells me to do this, I'm gonna do exactly that, yeah. no more, no less. And oh, we know. Oh, I was gonna yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. But it, it gets to the point where it's like, when you're when you're rehabbing, party like there's always like that little voice inside your head like oh is this actually going to be fixed you know versus when you get a surgery you know it's been fixed and you yeah. you know it, it's so obvious but yeah obviously everyone likes to avoid surgery if they can yeah you know? so i kind of it's actually quite a pleasing consultation because after thinking you're gonna have surgery surgery and mm -hmm. he actually said joe you know what i think it's healing well and i felt better myself because i was able to do certain things and i was like so you know what i'm just gonna do the rehab mm -hmm. um so yeah, uh, the season continued, and uh, um, obviously used to could probably vouch. I, I kind of stayed away a mm -hmm. little bit. I'd come in like once a week because mm -hmm. I, I'd, mentally, I just didn't like being around it. Mm -hmm. I like you. Got is, I remember seeing you like on your Instagram stories, yeah. like Barcelona. I was like, yeah, was in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, this year. <laughs> <Red Oscar. laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I've, obviously, I go to the gym and and whatnot, but I, I kind of like. Got went to like another level in terms of like I was so regimental. I mm -hmm. gym every day, and listen, I'm not a massive fan of doing legs, but mm -hmm. I, I was like a woman. I was literally mm -hmm. doing legs every day. Mm -hmm. and, He's got uh, the booty to show for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, that group uh, machine. That bunda. Yeah. Look at that I bunda. <laughs> and um, you just see progress over progress. But yeah, I wouldn't come around. I'd watch the games every now mm -hmm. and then, but then I'd my I even I is I really um, love the fact that the boys I work with, the coaches I work with. The people around me um, they were brilliant because they i couldn't necessarily coach but they still yeah. wanted me around it so mm -hmm. they still paid me good um and whatnot and that was kind of takes your mind off it a little thing you still get your little football fix mm -hmm. but you're not it's not you effectively nice touch. yes mm -hmm. it was um yeah it helped me wonders and obviously i went away at barcelona with my coaches and obviously the the, the players we coach and um, i took a team an under under seven under eight team babies and um, we end up winning it, and um, such a nice for such a season that didn't go out. It's quite a nice like thing to go mm -hmm. like, oh, thank good come from it. Yeah, of course. Um, some of those players are unbelievable. By unbelievable. The way. Yeah, it was uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it was good. Um, so yeah, that kind of kind of like helped me with my my rehab, and it's weird because like you said about surgery and doing your rehab, you don't know. So I don't think. Um, obviously me and you went away and we, we was obviously doing bits but and I was moving fine but I actually hadn't <laughs> kicked a ball for five months because right, okay. I was like so worried mm -hmm. I'd just done my running I'd done my, my strength work and uh, I remember coming back from all my holidays and whatnot and obviously you boys were doing sessions on the pitch and as much as like I'll come in I remember the day before pre-season I kicked my first ball and um, I was like ah oh, it's actually alright was that was that when I was with you? Yeah, you might. We have. took a session, didn't we? Yeah, well, I think we did do a session. We were doing the running to the cones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Yeah. yeah, and um, that was a good, like, indication that, Joe, what, I'm actually fine. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, obviously, we we started this season. And um, I remember pre season, it was tough, wasn't it? Like, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and where I haven't done anything uh, for five months, it hit me hard. Like, not my knee, but my body. Mm. And I remember I didn't play the first two pre-season fixtures mm -hmm. because it was just so, like, such a, um, yeah, tiring just, thing. Just tough, it was just yeah. tough. It was relentless. Like, it was 800 metre runs. Oh, Ooh. I'm just going home yeah. just sleeping. I remember then doing the 600 and going, oh, well, it's 200 metres less. And they were even harder. Yeah, if you do more of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I was thinking, oh, happy days, 200 metres less. Nah, they were horrible. They were yeah. the worst ones. Yeah, it was. Um, but it was nice to be back training and playing. <coughs> and um, yeah, thankfully, touch wood, my knee's been good. And uh, to say, actually, I'm actually quite pleased. And it's probably a massive achievement for me in terms of not just my knee, but I've probably played the most amount of games this season that I've played in probably all my career. Well, yeah, I would, I would say it's fair to say you've had a pretty decent season, <laughs> you know. Would you, would you say this is the, the best career? Best, uh, sorry, best, best career. career of your season? <laughs> best, career, best season of your career? Um, yeah, I'd definitely say it's got mm -hmm. massive highs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that title win season was huge, but mm. at the time, you don't, you, with a league, with a league like title, you don't really know you're going to win it, do you? Mm -hmm. It's like it's month after month mm -hmm. after month, whereas obviously we had the FA Cup and it's literally by the game. You have to win the game. And um, yeah, 
listen, some of the memories still don't feel quite real to today. And um, to say I played a part in it and um, everything around it, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's mad. Well, I think we should probably start talking about the FA Cup. We're going to start at Barrow, I think. I think it's probably yeah. a good place. League Two club. Have you, well, have you actually gone anywhere in the FA Cup before? Um, I've got to like round one, round two. And I remember obviously being at when in younger ages. Um, I think my first season was well in. I didn't play, but we actually got to round two and played Plymouth away. Uh, that obviously I won't, I don't think I was on the bench, but it was a good um, like eye opener. Yeah. It's was, it was crazy. And then I remember being at Welling when I was like, we got to round one or two and we played Carlisle at home. And uh, oh, I don't want to go away there. Yeah, nah. <laughs> and if we got beat like five, five one or five nil, but um, nah, it's good as to say you played against league opposition. Of course. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought, I thought <laughs> you were going to say <laughs> something. Of course. Oh, no, I was just um, agreeing. Yeah, so I guess we could talk about Barrows. You know, Barrow is an interesting one because don't run there, a massive club, but. I think Maidstone has probably played against them in the last five years, like at some point in the National League. Yeah. So were you? how did you feel going into that game? Uh, do you know what? There was no, like, any, like, optimism. We just went into the game thinking we'll just give it our all. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, do you know what? We, I think the first 10, 15 minutes, we kind of, like, settled into the game. We was like, Joe, actually, we're actually doing all right here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... Obviously, they scored a goal off the back of really nothing. Yeah. And it obviously... Literally the back of Fowler. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, literally come from nothing. And we were like... But it, no one was, like, upset. Everyone was like, oh, it is what it is. We're playing well, like... And what? We weren't expected to... And obviously, I was fortunate to score so early, which then helped us get ourselves a footprint, like, back into the game. And then, obviously... We've done that wonder show. Yeah, what a strike. <sighs> so when Joe Smith with two assists, one to Corny and then Why his did you ankle bring that up? Why did you <laughs> bring that up? No, the reason I brought yeah. it up is because this guy was looking at me. Yeah, no, we were smiling. I was waiting for him to say, I got the assists. But we were smiling at each other. I, I ran in front of, where's the James Chester James in Chester. the first episode? You, you see the Kent online interview. He's saying his ankle assisted Viv's second goal. <laughs> Uh, what a narcissist, bro. What nah, is... come on, it was a joke, though. Was a joke. Oh, sorry, yes, when yeah, he yeah, said yeah. that Biff was supposed to be coming off. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it was obviously a joke, obviously a joke. So, <laughs> huge win against a League Two club, scoring against a League Two club. Yeah. And then, what was your reaction to getting Stevenage or Port Vale in the next round? Uh, obviously, we all went, what was it, on the Sunday, we went to the, the Gallagher to watch the, and listen, we'd be lying if he wasn't, to mm -hmm. say we were disappointed, but it was another league fixture, a league opposition, and... Um, after beating Barrow, it was like, why can't we do it again? Mm -hmm. um, but it's really weird because we was an early kickoff again, weren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or oh, an early mm -hmm. kickoff, and um, there was no like. I remember sitting in the change room, and the buzz was so good, and no one really was like had any nerves. It was really crazy. It was really interesting, and um, we come in early as well, didn't we? Really, because yeah, uh, yeah, the. Yeah, the yeah, no, because it was the quarter, traffic. It was quarter past 10, 10 for a half 12. It was because yeah. of all the fans, or there were so many fans there. It was just to make sure that no one was no running one was, late for yeah, that day. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember that actually, Joe you know what? Um, because that's that's when you were struggling with your ankle, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And I remember on the Friday, and you could, you, I was fuming one night because we had so many like injuries, oh, yeah. yes. and like Gaffer was changing the side because yeah. obviously you pulled out of training. And that like, it was like, oh, Jacob play up top and all this. And I was like, no, no, no. Of all the days, like, why, why? Yeah, Jacob was like trying to do like the messy role, wasn't he? Like, You're playing a the... false nine. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to get Steven in. Yeah, there's like personnel changes and it was really like winding me up. And I was like, oh, like. But then, like you said, like, what you have to your disposal and mm -hmm. you get on with it. And mm -hmm. that's probably a good thing because I probably, and a lot of boys probably went in on the Saturday thinking, uh, do you know what? We've got this boys, these are boys that are playing. Um, whatever happened, happens. Yeah. The odds were really stacked against us, yeah. so there's no pressure. Literally no, no pressure. Yeah. And yeah. There was, you're right, there were such good vibes in the change room before that. I it remember was... coming in because I saw my dad walking to the stadium and like just the fans were everywhere. I remember coming into Fowler and saying, I, just, I don't want this to end. Yeah. don't yeah. want this to end. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, and then, yeah, so we went out and do you know what? We was actually the better of side, the better mm -hmm. side. And, um, we had opportunities, obviously, you had the header um, early on, and I think we had a few other sniffs, um, and then the penalty. Mm -hmm. 
The penalty come about, obviously. Another assist, sorry. Another assist. Jake, Jacob's oh, penalty. Jacob. Jacob's Take penalty. that back right now. Take that back. <laughs> Jacob's penalty. <laughs> Advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, please. <laughs> yeah, so obviously Jacob and Sol won the penalty and um, I was the designated penalty taker. And yeah, at the time, it probably didn't register how big the penalty was. Uh, you just hope for the best. I think you, you could play against a step four team and you still want to score. Mm-hmm. Were, you, were you nervous stepping up? Um, do you know what? I'd honestly, it was like a out of body experience. Like I couldn't tell you what I felt like at the time. Yeah. Um, I was just like, just pick a target and like just execute it to the best you can and just hope for the best. Mm-hmm. It's probably best that, because your first penalty was actually the week before against yeah, Tunbridge. Tunbridge on the New Year's Day. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably better that you actually, that wasn't your first penalty of the season. You'd already had one and you stuck it the other side. Yeah. So I wasn't, does that play in your mind? Do you think, oh, the keeper's probably seen me go that way? Or you just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go that yeah, way? Yeah, like, I don't think them things ever like come into your mind. I've always, I always have a set routine, but then I don't have a set side. I used to like wrap it, but then I obviously I've played against Tunbridge and I've gone the opposite side and it was actually a really good pen. And I was like, I oh, do you know what, I actually like that. Uh, but then when the Steve just thing happened, I was like, you just pick a side, you just go with your gut and... Yeah, thankfully, it was a all right penalty. And, but it was such a weird moment because it was quite early on in the game when it was like 30 something minutes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I didn't know how big the penalty would be because we could go and lose that game 3 1 after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, or, or win it 2 0. You don't mm-hmm. know. You don't know whether that's going to be the deciding moment. But um, yeah, no, what a, what a great like, game to be a part of. Like, I think you've spoken about before where like the fans is coming to the pitch. Yeah. Um, it was just so surreal. Obviously I see my parents and they don't, they couldn't stand their usual side. They s- stood on. Um, and I remember seeing at the end of the game and I was seeing, I was like double check. And obviously yeah, we had a little cry and whatnot with them, but <laughs> mm. yeah, it was massive. And then obviously we went out and <laughs> had like, it was like, what was it? Dry <laughs> January. There was like no one out. Like we had probably no the best there. night ever. We was playing like... <laughs> it was so much fun, wasn't heads it? Heads up in Brenchley and on our phones. <laughs> it's literally like, just us, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Madness. And then from there, you almost... I don't want to say you don't think it can get any bigger, but you're like, okay, we've had such a good run. We've beaten two league clubs at home. Like, this this is unbelievable. Um, You, you want a massive... And Ipswich, again, massive club. You want one of the big six. We don't get it. And it's like, oh... It's a bit of a letdown. Like this could be where it ends, and I mean, take us. Through. Someone had other ideas, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I think everything just leading up to it. Like, obviously, we went back down to the club when they'd done the draw, and like Sky Sports were doing interviews with us, and it, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. it was. Um, and I remember after the, I don't know, it was leading into the Steve. No, it was leading into the it switch. We actually, I actually had to do a press conference with Gaffer and. Gavin, that was weird. Like loads of like that cameras. was the funniest press conference. We watched it <laughs> yeah. like, before him. So oh. Gav, Gav, yeah, honestly, do you, you know what? Yeah, yeah. obviously, yeah, he used to play for yeah. Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were watching, and he for... was stumbling at everything. I could Bless see him, him. sweating. Oh, mate, it must be horrible. <laughs> yeah, we were watching uh, in the hotel on our phone because the TV wasn't it was working. So funny, bro. <laughs> oh. Poor Gav, man. But yeah, just the whole build up was like unreal, wasn't it? And then. Yeah, obviously we went to the hotel on the the Friday, and uh, we've touched on it before. Like, just the team spirit, and we was like playing darts. Like, obviously, quiz master, the quiz before, yeah, yeah, yeah. like just having dinner together. Like, it was unreal. And then obviously, we all got to bed, and like you're thinking, oh, tomorrow you're actually playing in such a big game. Yeah. Um, and then we had the the old alarm go off. <laughs> yeah. um, Take me back. Take me back, <laughs> yeah. boys. Wow. Yeah, and like it's weird because like you're trying to get yourself so ready for a game, mm-hmm. but you don't know what you're going into. You yeah. don't know mm-hmm. what the level's gonna be. And yeah. like when we turned up, it was crazy getting escorted to the the actual um, Portman Road, and then warm up. How good was the warm up? So good. Like I have a running joke with Gaffer and Craig <laughs> so good. when we come out, and obviously if there's no fans, I go ah oh, like. Don't really do it for me, but when there's loads of fans, I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. And obviously, we've turned up and it's 28,000. And I was like, yeah, this is this is like unbelievable. It was just so good. It was just so good. And um, is but, it, talking about it now, I can't believe like it talking about it now. I'm actually upset. Now. I'm like, yeah. I'm so sad. I just wish I could have lived in that moment. It feels yeah. fake, though. Isn't it? It does, it's just yeah. mad. It still does that. But um, it's just mad. Yeah. So obviously, we went into the game, and I kid you not, the levels were were crazy. Um, 
I remember the first ball come to me and I actually like done a like just brought it down and passed it and the, the fans cheered <laughs> and I passed like a five yard pass backwards <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, that's all right. This. And I kid you not, from then onwards, it was a graph. Oh, like, he didn't touch the ball for an hour. I was shouting to Boney and yeah. I was literally here to Boney. Yeah. I was like, Boney, left shoulder and he couldn't hear me. Yeah. It was that lad and... Um, I, wish I, I wish I had it, but some of the, like, I looked at player stats after the match some of the accurate passes, like players played 90 minutes and an under like eight accurate passes. Uh, we can't check now because we're, we're using the phones, but <laughs> yeah. um, like it, it was kind of like that, wasn't it? No, it was, it was mad. Like, obviously, Lucas had like a game of his life, mm -hmm. like he normally does, but just, yeah, like everyone was just fighting literally to like not concede. <laughs> and um, we just had that breakaway with a hell of a finish from Lamar. Um, well, we finish like unbelievable finish and i'm like oh my god like just to celebrate a goal in front of twenty eight thousand was like i was like yeah that's an achievement that's unbelievable that's exactly what we said on the bench like even if we lose now we've had that we've yeah had that moment like, i just yeah. wanted to like like celebrate a goal like, mm -hmm. unreal um and then we were in a coming second half and obviously gaffer's done, uh, gaffer's done his like motivational talk and uh but there's nothing you could not you couldn't really say anything mm -hmm. it's like go out try your best, mm -hmm. stick to the game plan and hopefully it's good enough. And um, yeah, so they've obviously got a goal a back and I'm thinking, ah, oh, this is it now. Like, we're going to get, yeah. we're going to get beat, but we've gone out on a high, like we've done well. And um, I remember Jacob come off, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Biv come on. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Biv has come on mm -hmm. and Gaff went to me, oh, go play in a 10. And obviously, I haven't played a lot in the tennis year, so I was like, happy days. I'm thinking, oh, that's a breather. It's a little bit breather. <laughs> and within the two minute spell of him going in the 10, um, the break rate was on. George obviously like intercepted it. Lamar fouled him. Yeah, <laughs> fouled him. And then um, I just see an opportunity where I was like, I'll tell you what. So I saw space. Yeah, and I just, I see me running like my head's bad. Like, <laughs> and obviously, you're knackered as it is, but it's like the 66th minute. And the, Lamar slightly being, I'm thinking, well, I'm not thinking. I'm literally get a shot off. Can you get a shot off? Can you get a shot off? And obviously, I've took the touch. And I was like, that's a good touch. And then, like we've spoken about, I actually touched the ball twice. Done that <laughs> when I finished. And any other time, you you air kick that, mm -hmm. and uh, I literally shoot. The geezer just absolutely takes me out, and I just look as I'm falling, and it's just the next just, and I'm that's like, oh that. my I just, god! I just can't oh, believe how bro. perfectly though, like your right foot touch when you're planting that, the ball. Yeah. Onto the end of your foot I to just, go in is yeah, meant. To. You couldn't write it, honestly. No, no and it was like uh, meant to be. And like, and then cold celebration. You yeah. can, you, can you remember anything after that? Yeah, like your emotions. Yeah, I just thought you were asking. Tell you, asking me. Can you? Yes, I can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think no. You just you get out of me like you like more thing in. I was like, this is unreal. And then obviously, it's, it's how good is it when all the fans are like yeah. pulling the whole side, like, yeah. whole side. I was like, that is unreal. And then. Obviously, you had their names on their back, and I was like, "Yeah, it's rude not to." Yeah. But like, once <laughs> get you those Insta followers yeah. up, man. Right? <laughs> um, but once you scored that goal, I was like, "We have to win this game." Yeah. Like, it's like I wanted to win it more than anything after mm -hmm. that because I was like, "Imagine we actually win it." Yeah. And um, you scored the winner. I've scored technically the winner, mm -hmm. and um, we held on with our lives. But what a day! Like the early kickoff, but we still didn't leave the ground till like five o'clock. So late. It was the. The best day of my life. The best oh, day of my life. Yeah. Bro. It's like, crazy. The, and that coach ride back as well. How oh, good was that? Yeah, like, yeah. We stopped off and got beer. And, all, and it, everyone in the Sainsbury's was saying, congratulations, yeah. and they were stopping us. Yeah. All. I always remember before the game, because obviously Rafi got sent off prior, mm -hmm. and obviously you was injured. And um, I said to Eustace, didn't I? I was like, don't worry, I'll, 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 um, I'll make sure you get another go. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He'll help us out. He'll I, help I us said, out. I'll help you out. I'll make sure you get another go today. And obviously Sick. we scored and obviously, obviously Rafe played in the, the other game and then you was like so close from getting yeah. back. Mm. But yeah, to, uh, after the game was unreal and then I always remember you was, everyone celebrating and it was like five baths in there in the, <laughs> in the back bit and I was like, I'm having a bath. I'll always tell that story. And, uh, the match winner won't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> just checked off the sparkers and just, just laid in I've the I've actually bath. got a video. I might put the video in. With, uh, <laughs> yeah, with Lucas aid. Hopefully I'll get a Lucas aid deal or something. But, um, <laughs> well, you, you had to do a lot of interviews after, didn't you? Yeah, it was, it was mad because obviously I missed the, the celebration where... Everything, everyone's in front of the fans because mm. I was doing an interview and then, but the fans were still there by the time I was done. Mm. It, was, it was just, uh, 
unforgettable moment. And obviously my family were there to witness my, my nan, which I was most pleased about. And obviously my nephew, uh, one of my nephews are there. And it's a moment that always going to sit well with me for the rest of my, of my, my career, my life, because to say my family have witnessed it and in such a, in a massive moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I have to say, so we had obviously a great night out afterwards and your brother came out and I, I, he was so proud of you. It was actually so nice to see. Like, he was just like on cloud nine for you. And I mean, to do that for your hometown club as well, it's obviously your hometown club as well. We, we've spoken about that in the past. Your hometown club to have probably the biggest goal in Maidstone history. That must have felt like, you know, you, you've told us today you've had ups and downs throughout your mm -hmm. career. That must have... That must have made it feel like every up and down you've had it was worth it to bring you to that point, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. I think you boys would be there when um, Trevor at breakfast and Craig was like, oh, use this moment yeah, yeah, to um, cool. like call your family or message your family. And uh, obviously I knew it was coming to the game and I was like, I'm not going to call them because I'm not, I'm not a phone call sort of person. I was like, I'm going to send a message. And I, I sent a message into the, the family group chat and I just said like, listen, whatever today brings, like, I'm just so thankful you've got me to this moment. I said, like, them times where my mum and my dad took me to here to here, my brothers coached me from grassroots level to where I am today. And um, after that, like, my, after the game, my mum was like, you had us in tears before the game. Like, my mum was crying in the pub and, like, it was, it was such a nice moment. And I, I still get emotional now thinking about it because, like, it's even though I'm the person that's done it, they're the person that, Probably mm -hmm. want it more than anyone mm -hmm. because they've they've all wanted, the sacrifices they've yeah, made. Yeah, they've made all the sacrifices. And uh yeah, I remember my brother coming out and he was like, Oh, where are you going? And he was like, I'll come out for the, and you know that night we had free drinks galore. Oh, yeah. And he was like, Why didn't I drink? Why didn't I drink? Because <laughs> we just get offered free drinks. And I was like, You sure you don't want one? He's like, No, no, no. But um like he obviously witnessed it and the amount of people that were coming up to us and like having pictures and shaking their hands. It like, was crazy. It was, yeah, it was crazy. It was so good. And it was weird to even get free food in like Wagamama's now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is mental. Yeah, I remember- Still waiting for Nando's to give us free food. Yeah. <laughs> I That's remember right, the, yeah. like two weeks after, uh, my brother, we had a family party, um, one of my nephew's party and he was like, oh, I'm going to go Wagamama's after. And I was like, oh, all right. I said, oh, I'll fancy that. I'll come with you. I'll meet you there. So he's got in there five minutes prior and I've walked in and as I've sat down, my sister-in-law's gone to me, uh, <laughs> they're looking and I was like, oh, are they? Uh, but I knew when you boys obviously went um, and uh, she, the woman's come over and she's like, I just want to say, before she'd even <laughs> ask me what I wanted for food, she's like, I just want to say, like, what you've done has been like amazing and uh, it was really nice. And then obviously we had dinner um, um, and I've gone to pay the bill because uh, it was like my sister-in-law's birthday so I was like oh, let me get it listen this, this. and she's and I've gone to pay for it she was <laughs> nothing there I can't find it and I was like yeah you're welcome like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, don't tell the yeah, family, don't tell like, the family that's one for but, the good guys um, <laughs> yeah they'd like, they'd like pay that menu like I paid that meal bear in mind it was just me and obviously my, my brother my sister-in-law <laughs> and the two kids and that <laughs> that is ledge so Sam we're moving on from the Ipswich game which we've which we've covered in good detail we then get Coventry in the next round. What what was that like? Uh, although we did lose, mm. you had your family there for that moment, especially afterwards. There's a video of you crying, going towards the crowd. What was that like for you? Um, yeah, I think l like we touched on before, we just didn't want it to be over. Mm. And obviously, it was a it's a nice moment for me, obviously, to captain the side mm -hmm. uh, in the fifth round, which I don't feel I'll probably ever get to say again. Um, but then. The whole fans and obviously my family being there through from the start all the way through and I think I think all the emotions just come out of me where I was just like I'm probably not gonna get this ever again. Mm -hmm. Like twenty plus I mean it's twenty six fans in that time, mm -hmm. like um on telly, the whole publicity around it, I was mm -hmm. doing interviews and it yeah, it was crazy and I just feel like stuff like that's just gonna always stick with me and I think yeah, it was just a just a great great moment that I've yeah, it's always gonna live me forever. It was great. It was like five nil. It didn't but feel to like have a that, no, but to crazy. have that moment with with our families was was just madness. And the fans after the, fa madness. the fans after were were so good. Like they, like so we said before, nice. they were trying to kick us out, and yeah, it was just a mental mental experience. Like, I love talking about it, but I hate talking about it at the same time because it just brings back so many good memories. And I'm like, 
I just want to be back in that moment. Yeah, why can't know? we do it every week, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, we've always got next year, though, but Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. I want to ask you a question. I, I actually asked this to Lucas as well, but for the young viewers and stuff, what would be your biggest piece of advice that you'd you'd give to them? Now, especially, you know, for your Rondos Academy. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Rondos Academy, sorry. Uh, funny enough, I'm doing a, a presentation in a couple of weeks' time with Mar Scholars at the minute. Mm -hmm. um, but just saying wherever you are, whatever level, as long as you're playing and you're enjoying your football, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think a lot of kids, obviously, it's, you have ambitions and inspire to play higher, mm -hmm. but sometimes you have to work your way up the mm -hmm. levels. Um, mm -hmm. It's not always plain sailing. Mm -hmm. Like people like scrutinize when they go, oh, you're playing step four, you're playing step three, but you, you're better off getting 30, 40 games at step 100%. four, step three, than getting five games in step two. Mm -hmm. 100%. You know what I mean? And um, you can't be seen on the bench. That's the most, you can't 100%. be seen on the bench. See that. You can't be seen in the stands. Well, you've got to be seen to be making loads of money. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? and, and you sometimes you have to take that step backwards to then propel yourself forward. 100%. Sure. And you've got to learn your trade. Like, if you're not playing, you're not getting that experience of real life game. Mm -hmm. um, like training doesn't touch nowhere near mm -hmm. that game environment. And you play against different sides and you know, as you drop down the levels, <laughs> the pitches get worse. Mm -hmm. The players get probably more physical. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> you referees have to, get even worse yeah, as well. Which and is you shocking. have to be like two, three steps ahead. Mm -hmm. And you got to earn the right. I go like, listen, like you are playing on a bad pitch, but you got to earn the right to then play on a, a good pitch, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I think wherever you are, whatever level you play at, you just gotta make sure you um, play games mm -hmm. and um, just stay, yeah, just stay with it and see where it takes you. For mm -hmm. sure, I think that's a, a really good way to to end the end the episode. It's been an absolute pleasure. Absolute yeah. pleasure. Second really ever guest. We've, been, we've been chasing Samuel for ages. <laughs> Great to finally get him one. Yeah, I've enjoyed Great it. Little, uh, I'm shocked we've had him for this whole story. time. I'm shocked no one came in and was like, "Send the phone right now." We, yeah. his phone. we put it on airplane yeah. mode. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna go back and be a lot of messages on there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for tuning in, Sam. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe because we we're, we're nearly at 500 subscribers. Yes, and also the the views that we're getting now, albeit some people might not have a YouTube channel, but we're getting like a thousand views. But then we've only got 400 and yeah. plus subscribers. And if you have a Gmail account, you automatically get a YouTube account. Yeah. So, so just if you have a Gmail, you can just hit subscribe and it subscribe. helps us so much. Yeah. We're trying to get to that 1,000, hopefully, as soon as possible. Yeah. And we also hit 1,000 on Insta, which is massive. Which we didn't say at the start. And, and TikTok say, yeah. as well. Oh, and TikTok. So, yeah. Yeah, go and follow us on TikTok, Instagram and... So the, the support Twitter, has been... Twitter as well. Yeah. Which we're not great at using. But nah. no, <laughs> not, not great on Twitter. Not yeah. great on Twitter. But yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.